Even the most modest TV series is such a huge undertaking that it's little surprise there are constantly sequences which, for one reason or another, sadly have to be left on the cutting room floor. With many TV shows being kept to frustratingly strict run times for the sake of those precious commercial breaks, directors are often forced to kill their darlings, as the saying goes, and ditch excess material they're otherwise in love with. Then there are those scenes which are cut instead by a network anxious about the challenging nature of the content, and every so often the writers themselves might even make the call to erase a scene from the script before shooting begins. Whatever the reason, and regardless of the stage of production these scenes made it to, each would have certainly got fans talking if nothing else. In most cases, you can at least understand why the scene was left out, but in a couple of examples, it's basically totally indefensible. Sadly, not even those scenes which were actually filmed have ever been released, seemingly forcing fans to use their imaginations forevermore. I'm Kirsten from What Culture, and these are nine deleted TV scenes that we never got to see. Number nine, The Mad Queen's Motivations Confirmed, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones' hurried final season was considered a major disappointment by most fans, with one of the biggest frustrations being Daenerys' rushed, unconvincing descent into murderous madness, best typified by her merciless destruction of King's Landing. It's a moment which should have been a shockingly powerful turning point for the series, yet one which ultimately felt unearned and disingenuous. Though much more work clearly had to be done in order to make audiences buy Danny's turn to the dark side. The recently released original scripts for the final season outline one scene in particular which would have lent some much needed shade and context to Danny's actions. While the final version of the sequence doesn't cut back to Danny while King's Landing is being lit up by Drogon, in the script there's a scene where she flies over the Red Keep and gazes upon the throne room, which, as the script reminds us, her ancestors built. Danny then notices a Lannister sigil in the throne room, serving as a symbol of everything that has been taken from her, and essentially being what drives her to fury. Obviously, Danny's turn requires far more fleshing out than a single scene can ever allow, but this would have nevertheless added clear meaning to a scene which, in final form, feels oddly weak from a character perspective. Number 8. Meryl Streep gets hit with an ice cream. Big Little Lies. While many of these scenes on this list were cut for objectionable content, there's really no justifying why Big Little Lies cut a scene from its second season where Reese Witherspoon throws an ice cream at Meryl freaking Streep. Yeah! In the season's fifth episode, Madeline, played by Witherspoon, confronts Mary Louise Wright, played by Streep, for suggesting that her own daughter-in-law, Celeste, which is Nicole Kidman, might be a bad parent. In the scene, Madeline is clearly seen holding an ice cream, which unfortunately doesn't ever leave her hand, but alas, the original film version of the scene in fact ended very differently. After sneaking set photos showed Witherspoon preparing to launch the ice cream at her legendary co-star, the actress confirmed that she did indeed throw it at Streep, and that this was filmed for the end of the scene. However, it was eventually deemed a tad too silly for the tone they were shooting for, and so the sugary assault was eventually cut. Unsurprisingly, given that the original set photo had gone viral long before the episode even aired, there was widespread outrage when the beat was cut from the final episode. Just release the clip already, HBO. If you can pull off the Snyder cut, why not this? Number 7. Rachel Moves In With Gunther Friends Though NBC has freely released tons of deleted material from Friends over the years, there are also a number of planned, scripted scenes and plots which were scrapped before they could go before cameras. Perhaps the most eyebrow-raising ditch subplot was planned for season 6 after Rachel moves out of Monica's apartment, at which point she shacks up with everyone's favourite sitcom barista, Gunther. Actor James Michael Taylor said of the episode's script, I remember reading the first draft of that script and thinking, oh man, they're never going to make this work. It just didn't read, even to me. I wasn't ungrateful that it didn't work. Through no fault of Jennifer or myself or the writing, it just felt contrived, and everything else that happened in the series and continues to be was quite organic. I remember looking at Gen 2 and we didn't think it was right. Whatever it was for, we didn't need that storyline. Though it isn't clear exactly how this would have played out, the potential to jump the shark speaks for itself, especially given Gunther's colossal crush on Rachel. It was probably for the best that this didn't happen, but at the same time, it's a shame it never got filmed before they realised how terrible an idea it was. Number 6. Norman and Mother Get Steamy Bates Motel 
It's fair to say that the relationship between Norman Bates and his mother Norma becomes increasingly twisted and suspect across the show's five seasons, with audiences kept on the edges of their seat by an ever-present incestuous vibe. But in a July 2016 interview, Farmiga confirmed that the original intent was to take this subtext even further, as she and Highmore filmed more overtly sexual scenes between Norman and Mother, the manifestation of Norma within Norman's own head. Yet these scenes never made it to air, leaving fans to forever fixate on just how far the show was originally going to take Norman's lust for his own mother. Number 5. Walt Runs Into a Former Student – Breaking Bad Breaking Bad creator Vince Gilligan has talked extensively about how many iterations of the show's series finale, Felina, were written before they settled on the completed shooting script. One scene in particular which Gilligan ultimately decided to ditch would have served as a terrific callback to Walter White's memorable chemistry lesson from the show's pilot episode. Gilligan explained, There was one scene cut from the final script for budget and time reasons. It took place after Walt makes the call in which he pretends he's the Times reporter. In it, a former student of Walt recognises him. Walt pays him off and threatens him to make sure he doesn't rat him out. But before leaving the former student, he asks, What kind of teacher was I? The former student replies, you were good. And then he says he remembered the time Walt sprayed different chemicals at a flame and it made different colours. While certainly not a vital scene in terms of Walt's character development, it nevertheless would have brought another aspect of the show full circle in a meaningful way. You can read the script pages for yourself online. Number 4. Kent Brockman, The Drug Addict, The Simpsons Believe it or not, The Simpsons' legendary episode, Who Shot Mr. Burns Part 2, turns 25 years old this September, and recently one of its writers, Josh Weinstein, revealed an outrageous gag which was eventually cut from the episode. In the script, Kent Brockman is seen reporting from the scene where Mr. Burns was shot, only for the police sniffer dogs to start hassling him, clearly implying that he has a questionable substance on his person. Realising he's about to be outed, Brockman then grabs a bag of medicinal herbs from his pocket and shoves it in his mouth, while asking Chief Wiggum, Anything else, Chief? Weinstein never learned for sure why the gag was cut, though he assumed for time constraints given that the episode was really jammed with stuff and this was just a side joke. Even if the gag was cut for content reasons, this being a family-friendly animated sitcom in 1995 after all, as herbal use became less stigmatised in the years that followed, The Simpsons increasingly cracked overt jokes about marijuana use. Number 3. Dead Kids in San Junipero – Black Mirror Black Mirror's Emmy-winning episode, San Junipero, is often held up as one of the series' best, and also singled out as one of the show's few episodes that isn't completely depressing. But things were almost quite different, as Charlie Brooker's original script for San Junipero featured a harrowing sequence in which Kelly visits a kindergarten within the simulated world of San Junipero. Afterwards, it dawns on both Kelly and the audience that all of the children within it are, in fact, dead children who have been uploaded to the simulation. Brooker said, In many ways, it was a beautiful image, but it was so heartrending that it destabilised everything else. As fascinating a scene as this sounds, it was probably the right call to cut it, as it likely risked upsetting the episode's general tone and, of course, harming those award chances. Number 2. Evil Will Kills Bob – Stranger Things one of Stranger Things' most affecting scenes to date is the sacrificial demise of Joyce Byer's boyfriend Bob Newby, who over the course of the show's second season transformed from a goofy boar into a genuinely likeable guy. A superhero, even. Bob is mauled to death by a pack of demo dogs after helping the group escape from Hawkins' lab, but his demise was initially quite different and much more disturbing to boot. In the original season, Outline Bob was written to die in just the third episode, being killed by Joyce's son, Will, after he's possessed by the Mind Flayer. But the Duffer brothers decided to keep Bob around a good while longer for one major reason. They loved Sean Astin's performance as Bob. Yet in Matt Duffer's own words, the call eventually had to be made. We kept postponing his death until eventually we got to episode 8, when it couldn't be postponed anymore. I think it was still narratively the right thing to do, but for me, it was the hardest scene to write, because I really didn't want to do it, but I felt bad that it had to be done. Number 1. The Junk Ring – Firefly Almost two decades after it first aired, Joss Whedon's Firefly remains a monument to unreleased promise of a show which Fox never even gave a fighting chance and which has remained a cult favourite ever since its premature cancellation. 
A few years ago, the show's star, Nathan Fillion, detailed an alternate opening scene which Whedon had originally planned to shoot. However, given its sheer scope and ambition, we can safely assume budgetary constraints got in the way. Joss once described an opening scene to me where we are looking at a planet with a ring around it, and as we come in close, we see the ring is actually rocks and pieces of ship and old derelicts. It's a junk ring. It's the junkyards. We mentioned it in Firefly one time. We see little bits and we're jumping slowly from bit to bit, and as we get closer we see Serenity floating lifeless and these little people getting on and coming through it, and as they get into the airlock and they close it, they come and there's Malcolm Reynolds, bleeding and cut, strapped down with giant guns and not looking great. He's got these two giant guns and he says, get off my ship. That sounds amazing, obviously, even if it's easy to see why Fox wouldn't stump up the cash for such a technically complex scene in a show they clearly weren't hugely enthused about. Boo. And there you go, the 10 deleted TV scenes that we never got to see. Oh, only, if only we could see those precious scenes. But let us know down below what you thought of them in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, click that subscribe button. But for now, I have been Kirsten Rhea from World Culture, and I'll see you in the next video.